Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melo and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today is my first ever Procreate tutorial in this channel. And I hope that you'll forgive me because I'm still getting the hang of, you know, putting my camera in a certain position to film my iPad with Procreate. But I will be doing something pretty awesome that I think that, well, you guys know it from the heading from the title of this video, which is making seamless patterns using Procreate so I can use them on Redbubble and on Art of Wear. The reason why this tutorial and this video basically includes both Redbubble and Art of Wear is because, well, two things they have in common. Both Redbubble and Art of Wear are marketplaces where you can just upload your art and if someone finds it on a certain product in these marketplaces and purchases them, you get commission. However, Art of Wear is also integratable with Etsy and with Shopify, so you can also sell their products on your own within your own shops. Another thing that both of these platforms have in common is the fact that you can repeat seamless patterns. Whether it's with Redbubble that the repeat button is just there multiplying your designs on everywhere, or with Art of Wear not having a repeat button, but having a duplicate option where you can basically put one square and then duplicate it and match them together. There's also like an assistant line that really helps you out, and you will see that later on in this video. I will be taking you now to my iPad where I'm going to use Procreate to create seamless patterns in two different techniques. These techniques can be really cool if you want to put in your own clip art or even if you want to do this whole like abstract painting, but making sure that it's seamless. So there are two different techniques for two of these purposes and I'm going to show you both of them. After that, I'm going to take you to my computer where I'm going to take one of these seamless patterns and place it on multiple products on Redbubble, and also the second seamless pattern to place it on several products on Art of Wear. So enough with the chit chat, let's just get started. So this is my Procreate, and what I want to do now, if I want to make a seamless pattern for Redbubble, I need to update a new canvas, a new surface to work on, and usually what I like to do if I'm on Redbubble is 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. And we have a new look here. Now, just like I said, there are two ways in which I could basically create seamless patterns. Let's start with the first one, with the easiest one. And that is basically to create a certain pattern here. And then do the same thing I did on Canva. I had a tutorial where I was showing this abstract painting I did and how I flipped it over and multiply it. So we're basically going to do the same. What I'm going to need to do, I'm working on this layer. And obviously this is not a full Procreate tutorial. I'm just going to select some of my favorite brushes. I do like airbrushing a little bit, maybe to create some background. And I'm basically creating here a very abstract design by selecting random brushes like this one making random circles going to my textures double tap will delete what i've done but i really am creating something very abstract here Obviously, you know, you guys have your own style, you guys have your own unique decorative way. But sometimes when I'm with the iPad, the only thing I want is to create this like big, beautiful, glorious mess of things. So it's very random. like this. No, I don't like that. It's really hard to decide what you like and don't like when you're doing abstract. It's all like the guidance, like, it's, you know, like this didn't come off as realistic enough, so I'm deleting it. But, you know, I've been doing this for quite a few days and I found it very relaxing. And so I have this design here. I think I am done with it. Let's just add a little bit more of those lines here that I like. Now, because some of the elements here 
are basically brushes. I want to make sure that I have a background attached to all of them. So I'm going to create a new layer and decide a color. Let's move it down. This is how it looks. Or maybe I want to make it darker. And it will look like this. I can also choose one of the blues to emphasize some of the colors in the painting. Maybe this actually kind of feels nice. I kind of like the combination around here. So I'm going to keep it up. And because I want these two to be connected, I'm going to squish them together. And then what I'm going to be doing is duplicating this layer four times. I'm also going to activate the background color because it's going to help me later on. And let's just make it here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line all the way down till it snaps me right in the center. And you can see the center guiding lines telling me I'm exactly in the center. For these parts, I usually like using my finger better than the pen. I found that it's more accurate. And snap. I'm going to move on to the layer number two and click on my tool again and lower the size all the way to this quarter. Now, this is not seamless as you can see, but if I flip this horizontally, it will be. Let's make sure that this is all the same. Now, if you're not sure if you did something right or wrong, just reverse it. Everything can be undone. Layer number two, again, duplicated. And squishing this here. And flip this one vertically. And going to our last layer, selecting it, placing it in this quarter, and flipping it both ways. And now if I go in, if I had any problems with this layer, then I would have had the color background visible underneath, but I don't. So this layer created the perfect seamless pattern. All I have to do now is squish them all together and send them to my computer, which is actually kind of easy because all I have to do is go to share as a PNG or as a JPEG. Let's say I choose a PNG and airdrop it to my computer. Another thing that I want to do, because I told you again, there are two ways to create seamless patterns, is this. Let's just remove this one from visibility and add ourselves a new layer. And with this new layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create certain elements. I, I think maybe I'll try something with hearts. We have Valentine's Day coming up in a few months. Maybe let's do something romantic. So I'm going to draw a heart. I'm very freestyle with my drawing because I do know that I'm just going to fill this up. And what I'm doing here is that I'm only drawing within the scope of the canvas. I'm not in any way, shape or form coming outside of the canvas. I am rotating it a bit, but I'm not leaving the boundaries of my canvas. This is so hard to do while recording, guys. It's the most uncomfortable I've ever been working on Procreate. I have no idea how people do Procreate tutorials. Really, cheers to all of these amazing artists who managed to film how they're doing Procreate. They are truly amazing. And now what I'm going to do is I need a background color for this since moving this layer in the next possible way is not going to be available for me unless it has a firm background and I'm going to select this background and I think it's going to be kind of cute. I'm also thinking now that I might want to add some white hearts to the mix. So let me just make a few small white hearts. Now I don't have to have a background for this design. I can have it with a transparent background which will be better for me especially if I want to upload it onto Redbubble or if you guys want to sell this. But I do need to have some sort of background for my next step. And later on, I'm just going to remove it. Let's say I've done this. And if I just grab these two now and mix them up together, they're going to be the same layer, but it's not what I want to do. Instead, I'm going to undo that and click on the layer here and press combine down, which basically attach both of these together but in a way that I can separate later. And then I'm going to slide over this group and duplicate it. And then I'm going to go to my new group while standing on it 
and again click on this arrow tool but this time let me just make my screen a bit smaller the actual art but this time i'm not going to make it a quarter what i'm going to do is i'm going to slide it to the left side and again with the snapping turned on i can see that i'm exactly in the center and turn this off and then i'm going to go to the other group do the same thing but slide it to the other side and as you can see if i'm not going to be in place you're going to see white spaces here and then snap and now if i'm going to unite everything together Everything is going to have this background, which I don't want. So I'm going to deactivate the backgrounds and grab from the new group till layer three here, pinch them all together, and I'm done. Let's add a new layer, give it a background, place it behind so I can see what I'm doing. Grab my white color, go to the above layer and fill in my pattern. And again, combine this layer down, duplicate my grouping, click on the upper group, and select the sliding tool, and slide it up until I hit the center spot with the snapping guidelines. Go to the other group and slide it down like that. Deactivate the backgrounds, pinch everything, and again, add a new layer with a new background. So what I'm doing here would be visible. And now I think I'll be almost done with everything. I just want to fill up some gaps here. And of course, I can do this as many times as I want, constantly going up one time and then going to the side the other time up and down into the sides until i feel like my pattern is good enough i often use this system if i want to do something with certain elements for example if i would want to design like a snowflake pattern or an animal pattern of any kind even abstract only if it's like modern abstract when it has you know shapes on it but usually i prefer the other system because i like to really have like this three style and now all i'm left to do is deactivate my background all of them and export this to my computer as a png file so we're going to go actually right now to my computer where I'm going to show you how I take these two patterns and upload one of them to Redbubble and one of them to Art of Wear. So the very first thing that I'm doing is going onto my Redbubble store, uploading new work, and I chose that design of the hearts. I think it's kind of cool. And then I'm just going to quickly write down the tags. And of course, I'm not going to be uploading this onto all of the products. So we're going to disable the products where this design doesn't look good on, but for most of my products, I can just make the image smaller, change the color of the background, as well as choose the repeat button as a pattern and just play around with it. Obviously, I think that with the pink and the white hearts, the best background would be to have a black background, but for the t-shirt dresses, the graphic t-shirt and the chiffon tops, because the sides of the t-shirt are black, I'm not gonna choose black for the entire t-shirt but I am gonna choose black for the entire A-line dress. And I think it's gonna be actually kind of cool. It is rather big though, so I'm making it smaller and I'm gonna disable the stickers. I'm also gonna do pretty much the same, just repeating this pattern and turning the background into black for the iPhone covers. I'm gonna do it for the desk mats, which I think it looks kind of cool. I like how they heart like so many hearts and you can control how many hearts you have in the design based, you know, on how small you make the image before you click on the regular grid repeat button. 
for prints, cards, and postcards, I'm going to deactivate. Not the whole thing. I mean, I can use this for like square prints, but I'm going to deactivate the cards. Otherwise, they're just going to be in the center. And we also have the laptop sleeves and skins that I think look good. And the shower curtains are actually something that I'm really interested in looking how they look. And they are so cute. With the mugs, I'm also going to give the pattern all over the place. I think it does look kind of nice, even though, you know, you have this like white edges on the side, but it's still kind of cute. I wonder when Redbubble are going to make it available to have like a black printed mug. I think that would be like a really awesome product. I know it's really like requested when it comes to Printful and a lot of Etsy sellers are selling the full black mug. Scarfs, tablet cases. We have the drawstring bag, which here I also didn't want to go with full on black. So I chose something kind of purplish. Obviously I could have gone with white if I didn't have any white hearts on it. And the notebook and the journal cover, again, just with a repeat option. For the clocks, I don't even have to change the size. I can just leave it like that. The artboard prints, I do want to have more hearts on it. So I am going to use the repeat option as well as with the acrylic blocks and coasters. The throw blankets, I think, would be one of my favorite ones here. I think it, it has sort of a look to it, especially, you know, with all the hearts. It's kind of really, really cute to just have around. And I do know a lot of women really like this combination of black, white, and pink. Generally speaking, black and white sort of go along with everything. And then we have the wood and canvas mounted prints, which look really nice. Cotton tote bags, deactivated pin buttons. Let's just make them black. And face masks, which I thought would look kind of dope. I think they do look kind of cool. Let's enable them. And the aprons with a black background and a regular grid pattern. I was also thinking about the jigsaw puzzles. I mean, it's not really good. The jigsaw puzzle, I do think it's going to be quite hard to, for people to make. So let's activate it. And the sleeveless top that does look kind of cool. We also have the floor pillows with a regular grid and a black background, as well as the phone wallets that really do look good, I think, in this kind of case. I think it's really adorable. With the leggings, I really enjoyed doing this, especially when I started seeing how it's going to look. And by the way, there is a legging review coming up in the next few weeks. Socks! No! I don't like Redbubble socks. There is a full video on why. They're currently not on any of my products, even though I sold a lot. Duffel bags, including also, and also the backpacks. Again, just the black background and the fitted mask. Now, I personally don't have a collection for hearts. I'm not really paying much attention to my Redbubble store. You can go ahead and check out my video on what I really do think about Redbubble. So there is no category here, but I'm just going to go with the tote bag for the main image of this product. And I was asked several times how I make like how I go to a page where all my designs are just there, just complete the da the upload. That's the page is going to take you to you like automatically. <laughs> so I didn't do anything special. I just clicked on upload and it takes you here where I can pretty much see all of these designs. They look really, really, really cute. Kind of really do like them. I really like the tapestry. The comforter looks really cool. The shower curtain looks really cool. And of course, you can also do this with so many different kinds of colors instead of pink or instead of white. And if you want to save one of the photos, for example, the photo that I use here, just click on the th three dots, download image, and just click on download on the image that you want. It's super easy and super fun. Now that this is downloaded and I'm pretty much done with Redbubble, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Art of Wear because we had another seamless pattern that we made and I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to look. And all you have to do is just click on Start Creating and it doesn't work the same way. There's a full tutorial about out of wear, by the way. But when you go to start creating, it lets you choose a product. You can't design for all of the products right away. And the product that I'm going to choose to start with this tutorial with is the flare dress. 52, 87 pixels by 55 and 21. It's an RGB color file that you can upload in either PNG or JPEG. And what I'm going to do here is click on add image and actually upload this seamless pattern that I made in Procreate. And I don't know if you guys like it. Please let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about it. And it's going to take a lot longer because it's a really heavy PNG file. It's in really high resolution and good quality. And also, Art of Wear is a bit slower than Redbubble. 
I think most websites are a bit slower than Redbubble and TeePublic. So we have this now and we're just going to click on it. And what it does is just opens on everything. And you can see that the DPI is very low. We need higher DPI for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the file very small, put it on the side and then click on duplicate. Cause I can just duplicate this square and then put it next to it. And I can't really explain to you how easy it is to snap these squares together in the right position. But if you do do that yourself, you're just going to see how easy it is. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically covering every single part of the dress, the back and the front. You can also see this in the design in the mock-up to my right, what I'm covering up. And the minute that I'm going to cover up everything, which I have a little bit more on the side, it's going to tell me that all the templates are covered. And you can see here, you can move around their 3D imaging. It looks really good. Like their mock-up is super cool. I like their ghost mock-ups. It's kind of, kind of cool. But another option that you have is to mirror the design on to the left, to the right. And in that case, it's not going to be using what I put on the right side. Like I can fully on delete anything on the right side of the dress design, because what it's going to do is it's going to take the design I had on the left, which is the front, and mirror it to the back. All I have to do now is maybe just move it a little bit because I do want it to cover everything. And now that I see that all my layers are covered and it's mirrored, you can see that it creates a seamless pattern on its own from the seams onto the sides because of the mirror effect. All you have to do now is save your product. And again, this takes a lot longer than Redbubble because you have to do products manually one after the other and naming your design. We don't really have a place for tags within the actual art of wear marketplace. But once we do save our design and name it, we can either take it to your Etsy store or Shopify store, or in my case, because I don't have any store connected, just add it to my art of wear store. Once I click on click, keep designing, I can choose a different product and just carry on. And in this case, one I want to design, Ooh, they have nice wall art. They do have nice wall art. I actually am looking into designing one of their spiral notebooks. It looks pretty, pretty cool. And what I can do here is just add image, click on my image. And again, it's going to open on everything. And I can actually use this as this is because it's big enough. And as you can see, the front has this like little protective layer on it, which is kind of cool, but I can also turn these around. Again, there is a full tutorial on art of wear in this channel. You can go ahead and check it out. I will leave a link to that down below. But I can also use the duplicate options here if I want the design to appear smaller on my notebook. And of course, don't forget to save your products, name your design. I like to call it abstract mess, but in this case, abstract mess notebook and save it and add it to my art of wear store. I can also order this product right from here and keep designing because I'm interested in making a little bit more products and I don't know which product I want to design with this. And they do have nice fabrics, but I'm thinking maybe I want to design a scarf. They have a long scarf that is 10,800 pixels long, which is pretty huge. But again, what I can do because it's a seamless pattern, I just have to duplicate it. And it's actually one of the easiest products to make. All I have to do is grab the design that has a really low DPI make it smaller. And I don't know if you notice, but like the scarf on the side is waving above me. It's so cool. <laughs> I like how it's like moving. And then all I have to do is duplicate the layers. And if I'm not happy, I can move the design onto the side and try to make things a bit differently by grabbing this design on a different type of alignment and then carrying out the duplication process. It's so cool that the scarf just keeps on moving. Just so cool. And now all I have to do is save my product because all the layers, all the template is covered and the layer DPI is okay, which will take time that you don't notice because I video edit the time that it took. Name my design and I'm just looking at it. This mock-up is insane. I mean, you can see the silk. I can't really explain it. And I am thinking about ordering <laughs> my own art of wear scarf because it does look pretty, pretty amazing. And you can see here some other photos. If you want to order it for yourself, it's $21 or $32 for the huge size one. And it does look kind of cool. 
I do have to say. But I'm gonna finish ordering this later on. For now, let's just make me bigger for a second. Much better. <laughs> I hope that you guys liked this tutorial. I mean, if you did, please hit that like button down below because every time you do, YouTube thinks, hey, this is a cool video, I'm gonna show it to more people and subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. But seriously, if you guys want me to make more Procreate tutorials, just let me know in the comment section down below or in our group. I'm gonna try and add it a bit more and I just don't know how many people here use Procreate and also filming it is really difficult. I mean, I don't wanna film it in low quality and you know, all the angles and everything. It's a bit more difficult to design when I'm filming the screen like with an external camera on top of the screen. And if I'm gonna film the screen, just the screen itself without you seeing my hand, it's gonna be far less effective as a tutorial. I'm gonna be seeing you guys tomorrow for shop reviews. I'm not gonna tell you what kind of shops I'm going to be reviewing, so you're gonna to have to come tomorrow and see for yourselves at 7 p.m. Bulgaria time. And of course, if you want your shops to be reviewed, all you have to do is scroll down below to the description and find the link to a Google form where you can go in and anonymously submit your shops. Those can be Etsy, Shopify, Payhip, Fine Art America, Society6, Redbubble, Tea Chief, Tea Public, Teespring, Art of Wear, wherever it is that you're selling your print and demand or printable items. After Friday, I'm gonna be seeing you surprisingly and shortly on Saturday with a print and demand company that has a really, really cool tool to check out if someone is stealing your art. And on Sunday, again, for a very short video, that does include art of wear and a new product that might be interesting to you guys to design right now because now is the time to design it and on monday with updates on what i'm doing on my etsy store or my payhip account to sell digital download files for other people to use for print on demand and for printables and the rest of the week of next you're just gonna have to wait because with that being said that was pretty much it from me for today thank you guys so much for watching and as usual i'll see you tomorrow in my next video bye